We are live today. Uh, today is going to be a special day because we have a special guest. We are going to discuss something very, very important. You can see on the screen about the uh, venous insufficient diagnosis. Uh, it is a story from uh, Polini study. Uh, so for that particular yes. case, I would like for people who will be uh, following us today on live session to be able to ask questions which are more uh, into... Uh, I would like people to be focusing questions on today's topic rather than immigration topics or any other topic. So welcome everyone. Uh, I'm going to ask Liz to introduce our guest and then we'll start asking questions and Pauline will be having the time to share uh, and create this awareness of one of the bigger things which many people do not know about. Welcome Liz. Thank you so much. Uh, so guys, welcome to the live stream. Yes, my name is Liz and on my channel, I go by role with Liz. Many of you have seen me on this channel and we have grown together. So I'm very, very excited to be back on this channel to share with you guys. And uh, today is special because we're just going to have a story time talking about the stigma that goes on in society. I mean, uh, when someone has is different from you, and the stigma that she has gone through, uh, she will explain the what she has gone through and to just to create awareness and to inspire somebody that could be going through the same. So her name is Pauline Study, and that is the, her channel name. And today we are wanting to get her to 1K, to 1,000 subscribers. So we have put her channel link in the, the um, in the comment section. So go ahead, click on the link and make sure to subscribe and also join us on the chat to get to understand what people go through in society and also how to help each other. So welcome, Pauline. We have an internet connection issue. Hello. So yes, she's Thank back. You. Can you hear us yes, though? Thank you very much. I'm so happy with that. I am so happy to be part of this. I'm very, very, very pleased and humbled that I am part of this. And yeah, I hope that from this, so many people get to learn a lot of, um, get to have a lot of information so that they're able to look out for their health and also to be able to stop the stigma that comes with all this and try to live a normal life like everyone else is the same. Yeah. So could you please kindly tell us about what you do on your channel? Uh, like the types of videos you do and also, yeah, just for people to know when they go to subscribe. Okay, so on my channel, I do um, about several things, but my niche is I do natural hair tutorials, natural hair talks. I do lifestyle vlogs. I do talks like this, but most of the times they're sit-down videos and those videos are always on current issues and also health issues because I like to create awareness about um, stuff like the, the condition I'm living with. I recently did a sickle cell awareness and I also have another one that is coming up. So basically I do talks, natural hair tutorials and uh, lifestyle vlogs. Thank you so much. Uh, so people, there is a link on the comment. <clears throat> Go ahead. <laughs> Subscribe to Pauline's channel. Uh, she has almost 900 something. We want to reach 1,000 today. So that's yeah. Be before we leave, before we leave the chat, one, that is one of the way to say thank you for her to create this awareness to so many people. Uh, when I saw her video and the, I got in touch myself, I had to go do the Google search and try to learn more myself to see how it is going because many people we take things for granted we don't do medical checks sometimes and especially if you are not uh into a developed world where you have the annual check i think those will be some of the questions we'll be able to ask her to share with us how did it happen and how do you come across to have that kind of diagnosis uh so please uh, subscribe to our channel okay. but also you can um, go to Liz and subscribe to Liz's channel Wow. Yeah, subscribe, subscribe. Yeah, so we can go directly to uh, Pauline. Can you please start explaining 
what is that type of uh, insufficiency mm -hmm. in the everything you can let us know and be aware of what is going on with the disease, but also how do you live with it and the awareness and everything you want us to learn from you? Okay, so firstly is that, um, firstly is that this kind of condition in simple terms, in the simplest terms is that it affects your lower limbs and uh, when it affects your lower limbs, it's basically affecting your veins in the body. And I mean your veins in the lower limbs, that's the legs. And your uh, your veins cannot push blood properly to the heart. So you're always going to have leak bugs um, into your limbs and they're going to consequently swell all the time. And uh, what happens most of the times is that when you have this condition, the valves, which are supposed to be like um, these claws, okay? I hope you guys can see these claws are like this, okay? So that means they cannot actually um, push the blood very well to the heart because they're supposed to control how the blood flows to the heart and how it it comes back to the to the to the legs. So because they are so wide, normally, if I recall very well, it's supposed to be 3.5 diameter between the valves. But when you are at a stage like mine, because mine in my right is eight and the other is 6.5, just on the lower and on the upper, that's on one leg. On the other, it's a bit fairer, but it's not any better. So when you have such valves, your your veins cannot push blood back to the heart. Consequently, your legs start swelling all the time. You can't even believe that that's the size of your legs and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, so in simple terms, that is how it is. That is what normally happens. Like you cannot, um, you, you cannot uh, feel very comfortable. There's so many symptoms that come with it. So many signs that come with it. And yeah. uh thank you so much for that just the little brief on that on your particular case uh how long did it take to be diagnosed what happened until you reach at that diagnosis that today this is what i'm going through plus remember i don't know about uganda but i'm talking just overall most of us is african we tend to if you have diseases which hospital they cannot diagnose quicker we say that is witchcraft <laughs> yeah so how did it happen to you your situation so um i hope you guys can hear me we can hear you yes yes so okay for me i feel like it took really a long time which actually from the people who I've talked to have the same condition, I've also taken a long time to get diagnosed. Um, I've had this condition since I was about 12 years or uh, yes, 12 years. That is when it started becoming prevalent. That is when I started feeling it. That is when I really felt that there was something really wrong with me. At age, even when I sat at the dining table to have a meal for about 30 minutes for... 20 minutes, I'll get up when my feet are swollen, which is not normal because, because you've overstood. But for me, it was really different. 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and my feet are already feeling like the pressure is a lot. So from 12 years until I was 20, um, until I was 20, yes, until I was 20, I was unable to because there's so many things that were at that time. Uh, people, was, I, I went to a hospital. They told me I had um, ionic anemia. I, I went somewhere. They told me, ah, there is nothing wrong. I think it's the age. I think it, some actually told no one to be at school. I just wanted to be away from school because, you know, you get sick and in boarding school, your parents come and like pick you and take you or when you over go to the sick bay they, they okay i think there is something that we cannot handle so you can take the kid home so some people actually thought that so it really took a long time and by the time i got diagnosed this was as, at a stage whereby it was really bad that i would sleep 
wake up, my feet are swollen. Every single time, nothing that really changes. So it was kind of a long story because for me to get diagnosed, I had to go through a lot. And then until uh, a certain friend to my contact to contact to get diagnosed. So I had to now go back for a background check. Like, do you have people in your family that suffer from this? For for truth be told, I've not seen anyone who has suffered from this in my family. And yeah, and then they asked uh, how long I had had it. And I told them I had it since um, 2011. And then that's when I went in for... Um, it's more like, I, I don't know how to term it very well, but it's very specific for diagnosing venous insufficiency and varicose veins. We cannot hear. So um, the long in that it was about from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. As the only person who was in the ward by that time. And it was really getting tired. And meanwhile, they are checking. Your feet are continuously swelling. I think it's mm -hmm. the internet connection. <coughs> so, guys, I th sorry, we have some internet issues every now and again, but just continue to subscribe to her channel. The link is in the comment section. Remember, you're subscribing. Our aim today on this chat is to get her get to 1,000 subscribers. So as we chat, as we do all this awareness topic, please subscribe to her channel as we support her through this. Pauline, can you hear us? I think she's, uh, it's the connection again. Can you hear, Pauline? Yeah, I think it's the connection. She's coming back into fourth. Uh, okay. Are you can you hear us? I am on. Okay. Did you finish the last part before you go to another question, Polly? Can you hear Pauline? Yes, please. She can hear, so if you want to ask. Okay, she's joining. The, just wait. Okay, she's coming back with her. Uh, Okay. Are you able to hear me? If you are able, I can go ahead and ask you another question. I think she's kind of still stuck. You could, um, she should join again. Uh, okay, so let me post the uh, her link. <coughs> Uh, you know, some people are still asking for the link. Uh, the link is on the chat. That is Pauline's uh, link. You can be able to go there and subscribe to her channel. Yeah. Uh, this type of, I mean, I'm not talking specifically for what is uh, her diagnosis, but what why we are we creating awareness is to make sure that people uh, there are certain diseases which are not common. We are used to malaria, tuberculosis. We are used to uh, maybe you have cholera, you have this. The normal one which you go to the hospital and they can just tell you right away. But there are certain diseases you can take years to get diagnosis. So when you find someone who has gone through that particular process, is a good way to uh, learn from that person so that for us we can be mind, uh, mindful if something comes to us to be aware that okay this is not witchcraft let me find what are the other possible things might happen to my body in that particular way welcome back pauline uh 
Okay, so we were talking about your background on how you came to I'm discover. Very sure. No problem at all. Can uh, you hear us though? Someone is saying, uh, Simon is saying, Pauline, uh, actually, I didn't yes, know. I can hear you. Yes, I didn't know such a uh, such a thing is existing. Thank you so much for the awareness. Um, Pauline, actually, my curiosity goes to when you're back in school, in a boarding school, uh, surrounded by students, and they don't understand what you're going through. Can you give us an insight of what you went through, especially with the stigma, with people who don't understand what you're going through, because we had the same growing up where people had like heart issues and all these strange diseases. And of course, people were stigmatized. So how was it for you? Can you hear us, Pauline? Okay. Um... It was it was really terrible because this happened uh, this happened in my secondary school. It also happened in university. In my secondary school, I never got a chance to really wear closed shoes. Most of it, especially in my form five and form six, because my feet were often swelling every every single time. So I'd never really wear them. And then people would always give me these eyes of that girl that doesn't wear school shoes, that girl that is never having proper shoes, that guy who is never putting on full uniform. I remember the head teacher of the school for me wearing open shoes and he asked me, he asked me why I wearing open shoes and I told him I'm wearing open shoes because I have this kind of condition. My feet swell all the time. By that time, I didn't know what was going on. But so many people are talking about me. People, they would always be staring at me like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. It reached an extent that I started wearing stockings that would actually not even make the situation any better for me. Like, I'll do a very tiny socks so that they could hide them from my feet. But then it didn't really work. Because it was like, what do your parents even better buying your clothes shoes and then i really loved i really loved like trying to be like everyone else but at a certain point i was like you know what i'm not going to hustle like this when i know that i cannot be like everyone else when i know this is the condition that and that's it to my life that's the real stigma me and my eyes were like okay what the heck is going on here because before I was there I was wearing socks okay so um people people aren't really staring at me people do not really understand I could not stay there for long like basically I couldn't sit for like an hour plus so I would get out of class and work and I would not really like take a short break. I'd have to move around a little to make sure that the blood a little circulates a little bit. And then people say calling me, Oh, that girl the toilet, that toilet girl. And I'm like, it's all coming from like you guys are already nicknaming me without knowing why I am not always this. And then it got worse when I started wearing the compression socks. They are, um, if let me let me just look for a picture as I, I tell you guys. So they are cream in color, and they are they have a color that anyone can see from any angle. I remember the first time I wore them, everyone literally laughed at me, and they were. Like, why just, like, a, that day I decided to wear a skirt and it was coincidentally checked. So, they're like, why are you wearing, like, a Scottish? I'm like, you guys, this is a health condition that is, that I cannot do anything about it. I have to dress like this whether I want it or not. So, they kept on laughing at me. Even the lecturer in that class at that time looked at me with this thing of, okay, you came to my class dressed like that. Are you saying up? I, I just... I just let it go, but then it kept on aching because every single time, every day and 
when I already shared a video about this, people still stare at me. They keep on looking at me and they're looking at me like I'm an alien, like as if whatever I'm like, I don't know. But the stigma is really a lot that everyone keeps on looking at you. So today, the most recent is that someone I think intentionally knocked me so that they could stop and stare at my feet because they had already been looking at me from afar. So when they got close, they um one of the girls hit my shoulder and that and I'm like, okay, what the heck is this? I need to look at them and they were looking at my feet and I'm like, you guys, you cannot keep on looking looking at me with these weird eyes like as if i cannot walk you can see me i'm walking properly but it's a lot of stigma that comes with this and i think because very few people know know about this because i haven't seen a lot and even those who know about it probably think this is a bandage for old age people that kind of thing yeah because i remember someone once told me that this exists for old age and, and i'm like wondering how over 10 years yeah that is how bad it has been and keeps on increasing no matter how many times I talk about it. Uh, Simon says, <coughs> uh, by the way, it takes the courage to share what you are going through publicly to help another person. So thank you so much for what you are been uh, having this courage to create awareness to share it to others. If I can make a question related yes. to that, at what age or when did you have started talking on YouTube, talking maybe to public lecture or to gatherings in front of other people? When did it start? When did you start to do that? You not get to very first cracky. Okay, I was saying, uh, Simon says it takes a courage to do what you are sharing what you are going through to others, which is helping others. But my question is, uh, when did you start uh, to talk to public, sharing what you are going through? And the, when you are sharing, maybe what are uh, the relief you have for doing that or challenges you have been facing for what you've been doing? I cannot hear you. Can you hear me? Now I can, yes. You can hear me now? Yes. Okay. Um, so I I just didn't talk about this. I told so many people about this. Um, I told a few people and the first time I really talked about it was I had gone for a Bible camp. And that time I told it and uh, people still never really understood. And luckily at that time, people didn't really mind it. But also, I, I think I became very bubble about it, got tired of people on me because it, it reached an extent that even in public places, people always said me there's this person who looked at me sometime when i was getting a bus and looked at me for about 30 minutes staring at me so i just decided that you know what i am going to let this be known so that people can get to know about this and it's a really really serious condition that has no cure so people need to learn to um uh so I decided to take it to my YouTube channel. At first, I tried to actually make this known my uh, Twitter, via my, 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 my tab, but people are not taking it really serious. And I'm like, okay, you're not taking me serious here. I'm going to go and put it to my YouTube channel. My YouTube channel, and I did that video. So many people have watched it. Some have, I can't say so many people have watched it compared to how I wanted it to be. Because I really wanted so many people to know about it so that they can learn to, like, not always um, look at people who are not, like, dressed up like them. Like, not always, like, always stare at them, always give them this rude look, always giving them this rude look. 
So I really seem very vocal about it in this year on that video. But what shocks me up to now is that some people still are in the very question, which I feel like some people really are ignorant. Run. They 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 care. They they even bother doing their research, with, which I think is very vital, especially after this live. I just hope that everyone can get to know that this is a condition that may not necessarily make you fragile, but then limits you to the extent which you should go to. But also because so many people, are going, some people are having it, they should not stigmatize them. They should not give them those um very few things. So that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. So thank you so much for uh, sharing your story. You know, the internet has been, you know, it has given us a hiccup, but at least we can hear you. Yeah. So um, I would like to know what are some of the challenges you have running your day-to-day -day life? What are some of the things you cannot do because of your condition now? Pauline, did you hear me? So, um, some of the challenges that I have is that, firstly, is that I am limited. I, I love traveling a lot. I love traveling a lot. And one of the things that I vividly remember when I was being diagnosed was that, please, if you're traveling, always wear your socks. Now, I hate this. The medical smell is not nice. You being looked at all the time. I can't walk very long distances. I I cannot I cannot go for a jog and I come back and I'm very normal. I don't think that can happen to me. I haven't seen that happen to me. I basically don't really run, and then oh, I can't sit for long. I can't stand for long. I can't walk for long. I I can't run. So those, those limit me already because even when I, even now, the only difference is that right now I'm wearing my socks nice and push back the blood. The other thing is that um, this condition, it brings a lot of stigma, like I've already explained. And uh, yeah, and sometimes I really feel is a time I couldn't move for three days. I grew up my calf behind my calf above my knee. I could not do anything, nothing. And the sad bit is that it's my big veins that are affected, not even the small ones. So the pain is worse, and that makes my condition a bit very severe my movements hard it makes basically i'm limited in all ways even when i'm cooking i have to always have um rest after just a lot then the other thing is that i cannot be in very hot areas and very cold areas because those even make my condition worse when i'm in hot area feet swell faster than they would have swollen if i was say in a cool condition, not a cold condition, cool condition, because even in the cold, my feet swell, and that's not really nice. And the other thing that I, like, one of the issues that I have is that I even I tell people that my head would rather have my feet hurting. For me, they, they start, I start feeling a lot of it in my feet, not on my Heat, but I'm feeling more like I don't know, I don't know how to explain, but the heat makes it very hard for me to. I feel like the pressure is a lot. Um, uh, always like work, even when I we keep uh, losing you, so I hope everyone can hear me, can hear her. I can be able to do things, and like I feel my. I don't feel my feet that heavy. Yeah, basically. 
Okay, uh, you we keep like it keeps it's so choppy. So let us know in the comment section if you can actually hear her or yeah, if you need us to readjust. And then also, if you have any questions and you're watching, go ahead and uh, type them in the comment section. We shall read them through and see if she has an answer to that. If you have any concerns, if you need to know about something, especially about the topic we have today, go ahead and let us know. And then just if you just joined us, please remember to go to her channel and subscribe. The link is in the comment section. Please go ahead and subscribe to her channel. Today, we want to let her get to 1,000 and we are close so please go ahead and subscribe and uh, do you have any questions ebm oh, <coughs> she her line dropped her line dropped yeah the internet connection is but, not the uh, best one of the things she mentioned which is uh, very tough especially in this world she talked about uh it is difficult for her to be in the very hot environment and the very cold environment uh so I mean, most of the time, most of the countries we live is either equatorial, sometimes it's very hot, and sometimes you can come to a very cold situation. Yeah. So to get the moderate uh, environment. With, it's very hard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and can you... say her network is not the best, not getting all the way. Oh, she... yeah, that is really bad. Can you hear us, Pauline? I think one is dropping, one is coming up. Yeah, that's, that's yeah, the really network bad. is really not the best. But we shall Let's keep pushing and see yeah, how far we can go. Yeah, the network is really not the best. Can you hear us, Pauline? Pauline? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay, yeah, so people are saying yeah. they couldn't hear you clearly because the of the only network. I'm having is that uh, I don't know. Oh well, I can hear you very properly on my phone, but then when laptop. Yeah, it doesn't work very properly, but I they say they can hear Liz and I when we talk, but they cannot, oh, but they cannot hear her. Yeah, the internet connection is not the best, and it sucks because we thought we would have a chat to get to know. But from what she has said, maybe we can just tell you guys, Pauline, make sure your YouTube is not open on the other side on your other gadget because we have feedback okay this is better so are you able to hear us she's stuck she's still stuck okay so yeah so like she has said this goes on in society we yes. have a lot of stigma we, especially if someone is different from you, if someone has a condition, maybe somebody has a certain disease or a certain way they were created or born, we have all this stigma going on in the world, like everywhere at least. And she says when she was in school, she did not even know herself what she was suffering from because they could not diagnose her. The doctors could not find out why her veins were swelling, why her feet were swelling. So because of that, she went through a lot of trauma, a lot of stigmatization from her fellow students, from the teachers, from everyone in society. And this is very common, especially if you have, you know, a certain, if you're different, if you're born different. And this can lead you to depression. This can cause a lot of people to even go, commit suicide because it is something you, you also don't understand why you were born the way you were born and why you're going through something that you do not even have control over. So it is, to me, she's very strong to share her story with the world after what she has gone through. And she's very young. At, at 20 years old, she has gone through so much from the time she was 12 until 20. I commend her for her courage to come out and share 
what she has gone through. So these are the type of stories people don't, may not even like, but it is what is going on. You, you only want to see the good news. You only want to see people dancing and having fun. But so many people out there are suffering because of stigma, because of what they are uh, told. Like she said, some people would tell her, oh, this is a girl that never sits. Maybe she's just pretending. She doesn't want to study. And because it is the truth, it is what she's going through, it hurts you so much. When you go back home as a child at 15, at 16, you're a teenager. You're not able to do sports like other people. You're not able to run. You're not able to socialize equally. People are looking at you as though, you know, you're, you're not a human being and they're calling you names and doing all these things. So it is very courageous of Pauline to come out and share yeah. and spread awareness for people that are going through the same thing. To be like, you know what? This is normal. Let's normalize people being different from us. It is not that because they are different, they are not human. They are human. They deserve to be um, to be treated the same way as you're treated. They deserve the kindness. They deserve the favors that you're getting. So yeah. So today, that is why we came here to share with you all that some most of you that have joined us and. Um, you have listened to our story. I know the network was no, a bit sketchy, but at least we were able to get a few things here and there. Uh, so today we want to help her get to 1,000. She's creating her channel to continue to spread awareness about stigma relating to her disease that we have put down here. And uh, if you don't understand it, you can actually go to Google and read about it myself. I do not understand much about it, but I will, like I said, EBM, we shall read and get, you know, empower ourselves with knowledge. Knowledge is power. So, yes. So let us, all of us who is watching, please click on the link go and subscribe so that you also learn one or two things. You may have a relative, you may have a friend that has a similar disease or probably a relative. So when you get this information, you're, um, you're empowered to help the other person. So do you have any questions for her? Does anyone have any questions that you need us to ask her? Just let us know. We shall go ahead and ask. Yeah, just a few messages of people appreciating for her courage to be able to come here and share this one. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it is very nice. I, I applaud you for that. My daughter keeps saying, bravo, bravo. So, <laughs> <laughs> so if she knew what we were talking about, she would do that for you to make you feel better. So, yeah. Uh, Natomi Class, thanks for all this content. Thank you for joining, Mr. Mogul Chris. Thank you so much for your positive feedback. So, Pauline, I would like to know, from the time you were diagnosed, have you got any differences? Like, do you feel better? Do you feel like you're getting help from Thank the time you. you got diagnosed? I see someone has asked. Can you hear me, Pauline? You know, to stop, to, to be able to have enough bandwidth, this, just close YouTube. Just, just focus on the chat. Close the YouTube on your channel or wherever because that, that makes it heavier for your phone or whatever network you're using. I don't know if she oh. can hear me. You can hear me? Can you hear me? She can't hear. I have. Okay. So Yes. Yes, I can hear. Can you hear me? Now we yes. Can. And we were asking, we were asking that after you've been diagnosed, has there been a different, a significant change that you have seen in your life from the time you were diagnosed? I don't I don't think she can hear yes, me. Yes, I can. Yeah. 
Did you hear Lizzie's question? Okay. Uh, yeah, so there are a few questions coming up. I okay. Think Give me just one minute. I'll be back, okay? There is a comment for you. Oh, baby <laughs> thank you nyaga <laughs> thank you okay so give me just one minute okay. i'll be back okay so when she's coming up i'll ask some few questions from simon so you can read the question uh on the board here uh from dolphin how has this symptom uh all this uh insufficiency affected your relationships in life Um, so, uh, can you guys hear me firstly? Yes. Okay, so basically, um, this hasn't really affected my relationships that much. Like, I can't say it has affected my relationships with people, because at least I try to make sure that my friends know that I am not really fine, so they shouldn't expect me um they shouldn't expect me to do things the way they do the things though some people are really adamant to understand this but if they cannot understand i just can't force them but i don't i can't say that it has really really affected my my relationships no it hasn't that much it hasn't what about love life boyfriend how does that have, is it understandable? How does that also affect you? Yes, please. When it comes to the relationship with maybe boyfriend or marriage down the road, uh, do people understand if they want to date you? Do they understand and supportive in that particular way? Well, um, um, I, I don't think anyone is a class of, say, biological science, if I should say that. Until I do that, it's very hard to understand because even my own mother who knows that I suffer from this does not understand it in its entirety. She knows I don't do this, can't do this, can't do this, can't do this, but she does not understand that I can't. She, I don't the real gist of how much pain I get, though she understands that I'm not supposed to do some stuff, she understands that I go through this pain. So, I think we need to sit such a part, first plain to them, but yeah, those are some things they would definitely not expect me to do, such as they always move around, always sit. For a long, how many things that I already said I cannot because, yeah, basically, that's okay. I don't know if you can be able to hear me. Uh, you are just uh, yeah, I can hear you. <laughs> Okay, there is another question someone is asking. Uh, is this, yes. uh, can this be transferable to another person or is something genetic, you just get it, How, kind of that? Can this defect be contagious? Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, oh, Can you oh, the question? Yeah, the no, question on the screen. And uh, most um some people who have it's actually only one person. Yes.
this is not contagious at all, but rather they say it is a a hereditary that because, for example, myself, I have not seen in a family with such a condition, and so I can't say that. But how? However, where it starts to have problems is that the kind of state I'm at, I am very prone to start getting spider veins. And that means that I can actually get wounds and uh, these wounds would definitely take long to heal, which means the risk of them getting affected and the risk of me getting sick often because of such infections is really high. But it doesn't mean that still that changes. No, it will be because this is basically your vein that is inside your body or any kind of germ that's in your body. No, it's not that case. So it's not really contagious. Okay. Uh Someone asking a question, is this symptom or how you, until you get the diagnosis, uh, pricey? I don't know uh, if the person means about the money-wise uh, treatment or anything or just insurance or this kind of thing. Yes, please. Yes, please. I cannot say it's cheap. No way. It cannot be cheap. Because for the problem, I do not know that very exact estimation, exactly how much it was. Okay. But in exact figures. But for, um, for example, when you've already been diagnosed, is that, and they are giving you compression socks, is that for example, at my stage, I should have gone and I've gone a surgery in a very terrible state. But for example, if I was to go for such a surgery, it wouldn't be cheap because what I went to operate today, it has to be costly because the amount of energy they put in is really a lot so that I am able to work again. But that being put aside, also that sucks that you are not less than 50 usd and that's a pair of which some will end up losing their elasticity and you have to buy another pair so you consequently find yourself spending up sd in time if you want to buy two pairs which is always a safer thing to do and then when it comes to you being diagnosed it's definitely not cheap okay Because uh, about two to four hours, depending how bad it is, for us, it's like about five USD and above. Yeah, but it's not cheap. And that's one of the consequences that you all like. I face like those are one issues that I would face because it's really pricey. For example, if my socks get loose, one of the things that I would tango is that. I have an insurance policy where I can get the socks without paying cash. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There are some messages people are appreciating. Thank you so much for the good content for Liz bringing you here. Uh, thank you for sharing, Pauline, your rising awareness. Uh, from Rashid, uh, from Sin TV. Thank you for sharing. I've never heard it. Uh, such. Uh, yeah, yeah. So people are saying thank you, which is very, very good uh, from Brenda. Uh, it's something good uh, when you share something which many people do not know. It helps a lot. Someone was talking about a green card, but we are today we are talking more about okay. something. Else. Uh, 
Yeah. Uh, is there any other thing you want people to know about uh, uh, this particular disease? Hello. Yes, please. I was saying, do you have any other oh. thing you want other people to know more about the disease? And the... You are... Do you hear me? Oh, well, yes. I would basically want to say that um, firstly is that Yes. So, can you hear me? Yes. Can you? Yes, we so can hear you. Basically, yeah. what I wanted to say is that um, one of the things that I find very vital, especially when it comes to such. Can you hear me? Yes, continue. Yes, um, Mama. Hmm. Yes, How so I was mommy? saying How's that the day? things that I want to have this is that day? these are very rare conditions hmm. which may be not very rare. These are not open conditions that are often to come across and uh, some people take this for granted but i'd like to bring your fruit people if you know that you are for example feeling an abomination in the swelling of your feet sometimes it's actually don't know it may be accompanied with pain and all that, that kind of stuff i would advise that you go for a diagnosis and not necessarily rely on google okay it's not very nice always self-diagnose but also one thing that is very very important which i feel like should be known is that african parents i i i, I think this is a stereotype that has come to be true is that they do not take serious they do not take them serious. and later on they're like oh my goodness this thing is serious actually so i think it's very vital for parents also i wish they were i don't know if the other older parents like very old, old parents who have like kids so that they don't take such circumstances for granted because i have a friend who i recently made and she also has the condition for her her parents are still taking it for granted. Actually, the fact that the mom um, also has the same condition and she really sought medical attention. So, because at this stage of my life, where I've not even accomplished and I'm getting things like blood, blood, blood pressure. Yeah. So uh, the network is still not the best. Serious and take that. I hope serious. You feel you're not. You feel that your legs are over swelling. You need to take this serious. <laughs> people need to take this thing serious and maybe try to educate their parents. But in case they also suffer from meat, they're able to get it. And also, one other thing. Thing that i forgot to talk about is the result of chemotherapy because they've undergone chemotherapy they end up getting such a condition and uh, so many people who end up getting it have actually had it because of that though for me it isn't the case even with the people who have interacted with it it isn't the case and for them actually they even know the cause mine i don't know at some point that part, I mean, actually thought that it could have been like maybe without the places that visit me. Yeah, so at this age, that was about three years ago. At this age, you cannot start telling me 
it because I missed it and I'm now suffering just starting right now. So yeah, basically that. Yeah, everybody's having difficulty to hear her. Yeah. So I, was, I was suggesting maybe you can end this one and then you can rearrange for another time where we can have a better, okay. better yeah. connection and interaction. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so um thank you everyone for joining in, but make sure you go to the link that EBM posted and you go subscribe to Pauline's channel and yeah, so she will be sharing most of her stories and also she does hair tutorials. She does so many amazing stuff there. So go and check her out and subscribe and so that later when she uploads, you're able to see what she's uploading. So yeah, so we could end the stream just because people can hardly hear you, Pauline, and it's becoming difficult since they came to hear your story. So we can plan another one and we do, we, te we test it before we go live and see if it will be better. Yeah. So thank you, thank you so much, everyone. We'll, we'll actually make sure that I have a better internet connection because it wasn't Yes. Thank you, Pen. We see you, Pen. Thank you. Make sure you go subscribe to Pauline's channel. It's down in the description box. She will also check you out. Okay. Bye, bye, everyone. Thank you, sir.